I've seen you throughout the winter and you've got stronger and stronger throughout that winter and uh, since November it's been pretty obvious you were definitely going to be riding bikes again and, but I still can't tell you what a thrill it was to see you at Jerby uh, which you kindly allowed me to come up to the private test you had to see you back out on a bike just completed the full circle for me of, of uh, talking to you throughout the winter and back on a bike Yeah, it was... Um... I was really lucky. We've got a good facility up there, and we're able to use it. But um, you know, to get to that point has been has been a lot of hard work, not only from myself, but you know, from other people. I've had a great team of people. You know, um, the Hyperbaric Chamber. You know, Dave Downey and his team down there have done an amazing job with me. Kath and uh, Isla from Scott Physiotherapy, and the uh, Alaman Sport Aid as well. They've been fully supportive of me throughout all this or you know whole whole issue um and it's it's uh, been an interesting experience but it's it's not just me that's got me here it's uh, all everyone who's helped me you know we've had people fundraising since the day it's happened and um i'm very lucky i'm very lucky to be here so talking with you <laughs> i'm delighted you are It's also worth just mentioning the two teams, isn't it? Because uh, Black Horse and Ian Locker and, of course, Makadu Kawasaki, uh, there's been no question of them going elsewhere and looking for another rider and giving up on you. They've stayed loyal. Yeah. Kept the 2011 window open for you. Yeah, and I think it's... Um, I can't thank them enough, really. I mean, I was in a situation where I didn't know what was going to be happening. I didn't know whether I was going to get back on a bike again. Um, it was just totally up in the air and since the day that it happened um, the guys have kept the berth open for me so and that's just perfect for me I love riding for both both teams Makadu Kawasaki and Black Horse Kawasaki um, I've done three or four years with them now uh, so I'm I'm perfectly at ease with both setups and um, it's a perfect environment for me to ease my way back into racing a bike again at uh, high speed, so I'm, I'm really lucky again. <laughs> Let's throw forward then, and it starts, doesn't it, this weekend. Brands Hatch. Yeah, I just hope I'm not a bat marker. <laughs> no, I've... Uh, How fit do you feel? Where, where do you, percentage-wise, put, put your level of fitness? Not quite at 100% yet? No, not quite 100%, but we've got a... We're lucky the season starts so late this season. Um, brands this weekend. I've got probably two or three more after that before we get to the Northwest and TT. You just don't know that that extra bit, that extra twenty percent could come in those extra few races, you know. But the more you're on a bike, the more you're yeah, going to get bike fit, yeah. aren't you? The more I'm riding, it's extra, it's extra, you know, rehab for me. And uh, yeah, hopefully come. Hopefully come my home event, I should be uh, somewhere thereabouts with my fitness and in a position to sort of, you know, stretch the cable, so to speak. And one final thing, when you go up through the veranda for the first time in practice, nail it, is it? Yeah, full haul the whole way around. <laughs> can't afford to slack enough, really. It's, uh, as I said, I can't afford to be um, thinking, or oh, better to ease off, because for whatever bizarre reason, I'm in a position where I'm in contention. Um, I can't afford to slack enough because that's where it could, could all be lost, you know? Ladies and, gen Ladies and gentlemen, the roof was going to come off this island if he had have got a win last year. After the year he's had now, what a reaction there will be if Connor Cummins, our local hero, gets a TT win. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Connor Cummins! TT 2010 was a major disappointment for the official Honda squad, retiring from both the Superbike and the senior races, both in winning positions. They returned with the new livery for 2011, the machines on the end there, and, but with the same rider lineup as in 2010. John McGuinness is the outright lap record holder who has tasted the TT winner's champagne 15 times. His teammate, Keith Amor, is a relative newcomer to the TT, starting his career in 2007, but already has four TT podiums to his credit, and is now searching for that TT victory. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Honda TT Legends team of John McGuinness and Keith Amor. Yes, uh, 
The Morgan Missile coming on the stage now has missed one TT meeting between 1996 and 2010. His record is impressive. 15 TT wins, 29 podiums and the lap record of 131.578 miles per hour. Keith Amor on stage with him too. I'll be talking to Tim Glover. It's been before a long time. Before we go any further, didn't Guy Martin look smart tonight in a relentless shirt? And he's actually <laughs> taken off those stinking green shorts. <laughs> and being corporate. Nah, nah. Just... He had a pint of Guinness in his hand as well. I don't, I don't know what that was. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't think they made tea. Guinness, but uh, there you go. <laughs> Let's talk about this exciting new venture because you're obviously a 15-time TT winner, a legend here on the Isle of Man, but you're also an ambassador in a way, aren't you now? The two of you for the Isle of Man TT with this world endurance effort. I didn't expect that question, actually. <laughs> Sorry, an should I ask I another one? Yeah, no, an ambassador. It sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, TT legend. It said so on my leathers today when I was riding around with a journalist, but... Uh, I don't know, I mean, legend, it's just, uh, it's a bit of a <coughs> name, to be honest, isn't it? It should be just TT races or something, but uh, it, that, that's what they've called it. And, you know, the bikes on the left, on, you know, on the stage there, it looks the business and uh, proud to be part of it, you know, and... Uh, but that message of the Isle of Man TT carried a lot of uh, meaning, didn't it, in France? Absolutely, yeah. I was uh, riding in the Bold Door and, uh, you know, a massive festival event, a lot of people there, you know, it must have been 100,000 plus people all partying and having a good time and uh, the amount of people that came up to me and said, oh, John McGuinness, TT, you know, and uh, for me that's very humbling, you know, I just, it was a lot of people came and, and uh, had a lot of interest in the team and that's just the connection with the Isle of Man and the TT, so, uh, you know, and it's a new venture for Honda, uh, new colours and a bit, bit of a different direction for me, I've done a lot of things in my career and I've never done world endurance and, uh, you know, the, a couple of days ago, we was riding around and, you know, on Sunday afternoon at three o'clock, we'd just finished the race and I jumped in my camper and drove right through the night and uh, we got back for this press conference and I've been so busy. I've just, I haven't been to bed for three days, so I'm just he, feeling he, a bit delicate. Your teammate's been lucky though, he's had a nice kip. He looks quite fresh actually, he's had it, shaved his hair, he looks pretty good tonight, but uh, he wasn't looking very good at two and three o'clock in the morning on the Saturday night in the middle of the ball door, I had to give him a kick up the arse and say, you know, I get get your gear on and let's keep this, uh, keep this show on the road, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was something very different, you know. I've done a lot of things, but I've never raced through a bonfire. There was smoke coming across the track from all the lunatics on the drink and burning everything and oh, it, was, uh, it, was, yeah, it was something special, pretty, pretty different. Listen, I'll tell you why you're a TT legend, all right? 15 TT wins, 29 podiums, the lap record at 131.578 and 46 finishes. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, yeah, 15 wins, it's, it's something special. And, uh, you know, the first time I did it in 96, I can remember it like yesterday, you know, setting off behind the late Mick Lofthouse and the late Lee Pullen. I sat off behind them both. And my first ever lap round here, it was raining at parts of the course, it was dry in other parts, it was windy, it was sunny, it was foggy, it was everything, you know, everything that I'd, I'd looked at and studied and it was, uh, you know, and here we are now and if somebody would have told me then that I'd won, I'd, I'd have 15 behind me, I'd, I'd have laughed at them, but here we are with it and uh, I've never been, uh, you know, at the moment, I'm, I'm feeling really happy, you know, I'm still a fat old fella and my teeth are rotten and I smell and things, but I just, I'm really, really looking forward to this year. You know, I am. I, I am. I love it. It's you know? last year, uh, because of what happened, sort of almost restoked the fires. Uh, not really. I mean, I was riding pretty good. You know, I was riding a big bank pr uh, pretty well. You know, and uh, a bit frustrating when guys stuck it in the wall at uh, at Glenvine. But you know, obviously, I had a, had a bit of a lead there. But it's, uh, I don't know where it is. But it's nice to see that you, everything's okay and, and as well. You know, Connor, uh, and we just followed Connor on the stage and genuinely, I'm, I'm really pleased that Connor is uh, up on his feet, is looking really well in himself and and, uh, and I've had a few drinks, I'm talking shite, but <laughs> I, I also, <laughs> genuinely, Hutchie, a good friend of mine, you know, at the moment he's sat there with a the frame on his leg and I really do wish him, where is he, 
somewhere. Just out there. I do well, he's just gone. He's probably gone behind the stage. Well, he's, getting ready he should to be come behind on. me because he hasn't won, won quite as many, so he's out last because he's the best, you know. <laughs> but I do actually, you know, hope that he does recover and uh, we see him back on track, genuinely. And uh, but uh, I've gone off track. Where were we? <laughs> well, let's uh, leave it there, John, and let's uh, talk to your teammate in the uh, TT Legends team, and that is, of course, uh, Keith Amor. At four podiums so far, I and mean, it's a short career still. You were the second fastest newcomer in the same year as uh, a certain Mr. Plater, who you're still now involved with. Yeah, um, Steve's uh, our teammate in the um, World Endurance Championship, which is quite interesting because he's just as focused on that as he was when he came here. I think sometimes he uh, he drives my other teammate a little bit nuts, but it's um, <laughs> it's all good. He's really focused and it's nice because you know the three of us being a little bit um, a little bit more mature, shall we say, in our years. It's um, the team gelled pretty well. You know, it's we all kind of pulled towards the same direction, and apart from the height of the foot pegs which John and him argue about constantly. Um, everything goes really well. Um, Steve, unfortunately, well, fortunately for me, isn't racing anymore. That's why I'm in the team on the roads, that is. Um, I mean, that was an amazing turnaround, wasn't it, leading into last year's TT. You were uh, struggling for somewhere to go, and all of a sudden you ended up with HM Plant Honda, as it was. Yeah, I mean, I ended up there because John said to me at the beginning of the year, you know, things aren't right, and whoever you're riding for, there's no point being there. So, I mean, I made the decision to go on my own, and that's what I did. And then he also said to me, you know, something will come up, somebody will get injured, guaranteed you'll get offered a ride. Didn't think it was his teammate at the time no, when I he said that, Steve did he? would bury yourself in a, in a fence somewhere. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, here we are. I mean, it's another year now. I'm going to have a chance to just spend a bit more time on a superbike, so hopefully um, I'm going to be a bit more competitive. Listen, we wish you both well. Thanks for coming on stage. Good luck as well with the World Endurance Venture. We're certainly keeping a close eye on that back here on the Isle of Man. We wish you well. The Honda TT Legends team of John McGuinness and Keith Amor. The popular Keith Amor and uh, John McGuinness there, who uh, well, gave a pretty self-effacing account of himself, didn't he? Just uh, one more guest now for it's Chris to introduce. All the people are buying him the ale. It's only least he's happy. Back. They are. Back to the sidecars now. And Klaus Kleffenbach was a popular double race winner in 2010, having tried to win his beloved TT since first coming to here in 2004. Klaus is reunited with his local passenger Daniel Sale and again starts favourite in the colours of his longtime sponsor, local company Manx Gas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome last year's sidecar race double TT winners, Klaus Kleffenbach and Dan Sale. In fact, we've got uh, two more guests, uh, Klaus Kroppenbach and Dan Sale coming on. First of all, to talk to Tim Glover, hoping for another successful season. And this packed crowd here at the Royal Hall in the Villa Marina being treated to a little montage of some of their celebrations from years gone by. It was good. You just missed it, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, welcome, champions. Champions, yeah. Double champions. Yeah, sounds good, eh? We saw the array of talent you're going to be up against earlier. The other sidecar riders all up here on the stage. They're all going to be after your crown, your title. Yeah, and um, they are quite strong. It's, uh, qu quite, quite strong guys behind us, so... Um, but I feel well prepared for this year's TT and I'm looking forward, I can't wait after, especially after that evening, uh, I can't wait to race out here. 